Every time I look down the Sunrisers squad and I see their results, there's a tinge of regret within me. Because how can a team that has such good players consistently year upon year not deliver? I mean, you looked at the Sunrisers through the middle of the last decade, they seem to qualify, make the playoffs every year. And then three years in a row, they've managed to find themselves down at the bottom. Bottom 21, bottom 23, not too far from the bottom in 22. In fact, in 23, I had Sunrisers in my top four. I thought they'd qualify as well. But somehow the Sunrisers seem to find a way to take a very good squad and not qualify. And I don't know what the thinking there is. I'm not going to sit here on the perch and say this is how it should be. I don't know what the thinking within is. But what I do know is it does not help to keep changing your coaches and captains every year. So what do we have this year? Another coach, another captain. And that's the one that surprises me a little bit. The choice of Pat Cummins as captain. I can see where that's coming from. Let me be honest, I'm not sure if it's the best, but I can see where it's coming from. Because I don't think they thought Markram could get a place in the starting 11. Even though it's been so good for them with the uh, Sunrisers Eastern Cape. And so, you've got your marquee signing, you unveil him as captain. The, in all fairness, Pat Cummins is a far better captain now than when he started off. He, he was very good at the, at the World Cup, he's been a good test match captain. But there are some issues around Cummins that I'll put forward straight up front. Number one, is he tired? He's played every single thing. Is he just looking to come to the IPL and say, I'll go and play as a player and I'll have fun. But now he can't do that. He's captain of a side where uh, captains and coaches are coming and going. Does he have enough time to understand who are the players that he's got to get the best out of? Does he know what's going on in Mayank Agarwal's mind? Rahul Tripathi's had a bad season as a good IPL player. How does he spend enough time and get the best out of Umran Malik? And how does he look at four high-quality overseas players and say, you know what, you're not playing. Because that set of overseas players is, is, is just wow. So how do you pick four out of those eight? And that is how I started making my analysis of the Sunrisers this year. Heinrich Klassen makes it to every franchise team, every national team, any team anywhere in the world. So Klassen comes in, you watch South Africa playing, you watch the franchise teams that he's playing for playing, and Klassen is producing some almost unbelievable innings. Klassen, in the last 12 months, has been what Surya Kumar Yadav has been in T20 cricket for India. And for Sunrisers to do well, Heinrich Klassen has to do well. Now, depending on where they are playing, I thought I'd go with Vanindu Hasaranga because his batting has come a long way. He's now an all-rounder in T20 cricket. And I thought I'd go, I'd use the form of Travis Head. No Marco Janssen, what a white ball player he's becoming. No Glenn Phillips. If there was a loan system, everybody would want Glenn Phillips in there. Fazalak Faruqi is, is, is a good player. Markram is a very good player. But that's the way it is. So, given that, I started to structure the Sunrisers team a little bit. I think a lot depends for them on how three quality Indian players do. That was one of their problems last year. But Mayank Agarwal, Abhishek Sharma and Rahul Tripathi, if they can do well, because otherwise their backup is only Anmol Preet Singh. If they can do well, then I think the Sunrisers are doing well. And then you've got to find the slots for each. So I'll use the experience of Mayank Agarwal and have him opening the batting with Travis Head. Bit hard on Abhishek Sharma, but he's, he's, he's a floater. He's had an absolutely fabulous Mushtaq Ali. He's averaged, what, 48, striking at 190. If it doesn't go well with Mayank Agarwal, you can send Abhishek up as well, even though it will be, uh, it'll be two left-handers. Then at four and five, I'd like to start with Rahul Tripathi and Heinrich Klaassen. Depending on the situation, uh, uh, go either way. Then six and seven are my two spin bowling all-rounders. Nobody needs a bigger IPL season than Washington Sundar does. And I, I suspect, I don't know if he's happy playing in, this, in the role that he has over here. One of the options is you ask him to go up the order, he'll bite your hand off if you tell him to. So Washington Sundar at six, Wanindu Hasaranga at seven. Luckily for the Sunrisers, they've got options there as well because they've got Mayank Markande in the side who's had a pretty good Mushtaq Ali season this year. So if they find that just for the sake of balance, they need to play someone like Phillips at six instead of Washington Sundar, then they can go in with Markande instead of, uh, instead of Hasaranga. Then Cummins comes. Now, what used to be their big strength became their big problem last year. Bhuvi had one of his best seasons. He walks into the side again. He's done well in domestic cricket this year too. But at the death, everybody was leaking runs. So how good is Natarajan? He hasn't played a lot of cricket. How good is Natarajan? What kind of form is he in? 
every time I looked at the scorecard, I was disappointed. I had a sigh when I looked at Umran Malik's numbers. So they might look at Umran Malik, but they might also look at Nitish Reddy, who's who's a bit of an all-rounder and who's played well this year in uh, in domestic cricket. So I'll finish with Bhuvneshwar, with Umran Malik and Natarajan. You need someone to bowl at the death. I, I have no idea how Natarajan is bowling, but hopefully he's bowling well. And I'm going in with Abdul Summer. Then it might raise an eyebrow because he's been promising a lot uh, for a long time now. I look at the JNK scores when they're playing domestic cricket. Only occasionally he's flowered, but he's made for this kind of game. I noticed he had a fabulous finish in one of the uh, build-up T20 games in the DY Patil tournament. And if he's only told go and play 10 balls, 12 balls, 15 balls as an impact sub, I still think he can have a role. So Abdul Samad will be my impact sub in this side. That's my team for the Sunrisers. Like almost every other franchise, first 11 looks very good. I still think the key will be how do those top three Indian batters do and how do the top three Indian bowlers do. If those are going well, the overseas players will look after themselves and Sunrisers should have a good year.